Bionicle characters belong to the various species and races which exist in the fictional universe of the LEGO franchise Bionicle. The universe is mostly inhabited by beings with a skeletal and muscular structure, but who have metallic armor rather than skin. Most beings' skulls are bare, and they wear Kanohi masks. Some of these enable psychokinetic feats. Topic. Generation 1 Topic. The Matoran Universe Topic Matoran The Matoran are a race of small humanoid beings, and the most common inhabitants of their namesake universe. A few become Toa at some point in their lives if they are destined for it. In their natural state their elemental energies cannot be accessed, instead manifesting as minor physical enhancements corresponding to their respective elements, such as increased heat tolerance, minor night vision etc. Additionally they cannot activate the powers of Kanohi masks. Though they are among the weakest races, they will fight to the last for their homes and lives, and are able to create fortresses, weapons, defense machines, and whatever other tools they need. The Matoran live by the principles of unity, duty, and destiny. All water, lightning, and psionics Matoran are female, all others, with the exception of light and shadow, are male. Both light and shadow are mixed gender. Light Matoran, more commonly known as Av Matoran, can change the color of their armor and channel power through their weapons. Certain Matoran such as Fey Matoran of Iron and De Matoran of Sonics, have been reduced in number by the Brotherhood of Makuta due to fear of what a Matoran destined to become a Toa of said elements could achieve. Notable Matoran include, Jala, a Tar Matoran fire element voiced by Andrew Francis as a Matoran, currently a Toa. Formerly deceased, but brought back to life by Takanuva. He was formerly known as Jala, and was formerly captain of the Tar Koro Guard. Matoro, a co matoran ice element, formerly a Toa, now deceased. Hali, a Gar Matoran water element, voiced by Kiara Zani as a Matoran, currently a Toa. Maku, a Gar Matoran water element, formerly known as Maku. She has cameo appearances in her first two films, and was once part of the Chronicler's company. Kongu, a Le Matoran air element, voiced by Lee Toka as a Matoran, currently a Toa. Tamaru, a Le Matoran air element, once part of the Chronicler's company. Onepu, an ONU Matoran earth element, Nuparu, an ONU Matoran earth element, currently a Toa Taipu, an ONU Matoran earth element, once part of the Chronicler's company. Tahuti, an ONU Matoran Earth Element, formerly known as Tahuti. Hyuki, a Po Matoran Stone Element, voiced by Michael Dobson as a Matoran, currently a Toa. Formerly known as Huki. Hafu, a Po Matoran Stone Element, once part of the Chronicler's Company. Akmu, a Po Matoran Stone Element, a Matoran who tried to betray other Matoran. Takua, an Av Matoran light element, voiced by Jason Mishas, currently a Toa named Takanuva. Selek, an Av Matoran light element, Tanma, an Av Matoran light element, Photok, an Av Matoran light element, Kurop, an Av Matoran light element, former Shadow Matoran. Radiac, an Av Matoran light element, former Shadow Matoran Gavla, an Av Matoran light element, former Shadow Matoran. Deca, a Po Matoran stone element, transformed into a replica of Hydraxon. Vikan, a Le Matoran air element, former Shadow Matoran. Defilac, a Le Matoran air element, Mazika, a Co Matoran ice element, Balta, a Tar Matoran fire element, former member of the Matoran resistance on Voya Nui. Dalu, a Gar Matoran water element, former member of the Matoran resistance on Voya Nui. Garen, an ONU Matoran Earth Element, former leader of the Matoran resistance on Voya Nui Velika, a Po Matoran Stone Element, former member of the Matoran resistance on Voya Nui. 
Velika was eventually revealed to be a great being in disguise. Pyrrhic, a Le Matoran air element, former member of the Matoran resistance on Voya Nui. Nuri, a Ta Matoran fire element, formerly known as Nuri. Vesola, a Ga Matoran water element. Orkum, a Le Matoran air element, formerly known as Orkan. Erye, a Ko Matoran ice element. Kazi, a Komatoran ice element, former member of the Matoran resistance on Voya Nui. Sada, a Ta Matoran fire element. Idris, a Ga Matoran water element. Kotu, a Ga Matoran water element. Topic: <laughs> Toa. See main article, Toa, Bionicle Toa are humanoid beings, each with power over their element. They are the heroes and primary protagonists of Bionicle. They were created as protectors of the Matoran race. Some Toa began life as such, while in other cases certain Matoran, using Toa stones, transform into Toa. They serve as the public heroes of the great spirit Mata Nui and can wield the power of the elements. Teams of Toa typically consist of six members, each representing one of the main elements, air, water, earth, stone, fire, ice. Turaga When a Toa fulfills his, her destiny, it may give up its power and join the Turaga, the elders that lead the Matoran. Their elemental powers are minimal and rarely used, but they can access the powers of weaker noble Kanohi masks. Notable Turaga Vakama is a Turaga of Fire, and the former elder of Ta Koro on Mata Nui, now elder of Ta Metru. His badge of office is a fire staff, and he wears a noble huna, the mask of concealment. Vakama is now in Metru Nui, and he led the city with his fellow Turaga and Turaga Dume, until Turaga Akmu came into power. He is voiced by Christopher Gaze as a Turaga and Alessandro Giuliani as a Matoran and Toa. Nokama is a Turaga of Water, and the former elder of Ga Koro on Mata Nui, now elder of Ga Metru. Her badge of office is a trident, carved from Makuta fish bones, and wears a noble rao, the mask of translation. Nokama is now in Metru Nui, and she led the city with her fellow Turaga and Turaga Dume, until Turaga Akmu came into power. She is voiced by Leslie Ewan as a Turaga with a native New Zealand accent and Tabitha St. Germain as a Matoran and Toa. Mato is a Turaga of Air, and the former elder of La Coro on Mata Nui, now elder of La Metru. His badge of office is the Kau Kau Staff the name has nothing to do with the Kanohi Kau Kau, mask of water breathing, it is derived from the cry of the Bracchus monkey, and he wears a noble Mahiki, mask of illusion. Mato is now in Metru Nui, and he led the city with his fellow Turaga and Turaga Dume, until Turaga Akmu came into power. Nuju is a Turaga of Ice, and the former elder of Ko Koro on Mata Nui, now elder of Ko Metru. His badge of office is an ice pick, and he wears a noble Matatu, mask of telekinesis. Nuju is now on Metru Nui, and he led the city with his fellow Turaga and Turaga Dume, until Turaga Akmu came into power. Onewa is a Turaga of Stone, and the former elder of Po Koro on Mata Nui, now elder of Po Metru. His badge of office is a stone hammer, and he wears a noble Komau, mask of mind control. Onewa is now in Metru Nui, and he led the city with his fellow Turaga and Turaga Dume, until Turaga Akmu came into power. He is voiced by Dale Wilson as a Turaga and Brian Drummond as a Matoran and Toa. Fenua is a Turaga of Earth, and the former elder of Onu Koro on Mata Nui, now elder of Onu Metru. His badge of office is a drill staff, called the Drill of Inua, 
and he wears a noble ruro, mask of night vision. Fenua is now in Metru Nui, and he led the city with his fellow Taraga and Taraga Dume, until Taraga Akmu came into power. Dume is a Taraga of fire, and the elder of Metru Nui. Dume's badge of office is a fire staff, similar to Vakama's, and he wears a noble Kirill, mask of regeneration. Prior to this, he was a Toa who fought Dark Hunters and Rahi, and had a hand in turning Likan into a Toa. He was kidnapped by Makuta Teradax as part of the final stage of his attack on Mata Nui, and was eventually found by the Toa Metru in an induced coma in the archives. He preferred to keep the Matoran at a distance when watching over them, in contrast to the open friendship the Taraga of Mata Nui displayed. This detachment made Teradax's kidnapping of him easier, although it did not stop Lekan suspecting the truth, and he was prepared to give his life to protect his people. Dume remained on Metru Nui after the Toa Metru took the Matoran to the island of Mata Nui above, refusing to leave the city. Instead he used his Kanohi mask's power, along with help from Kitungu and the Rahaga to begin repairs on Metru Nui due to damage by the Vizarak Horde in preparation for the day that the Matoran would eventually return to the city. He was leading the city with the Mata Nui Taraga until Taraga Akmu came into power, and joined the exodus to Spherus Magna when Makuta Teradax was killed. He is voiced by Gerard Plunkett. Lekan was a Taraga of fire, killed by Makuta Teradax after the Great Cataclysm. It is unknown what his badge of office may have been, but it is known that he wore a noble how, mask of shielding. This mask was given to the Tar Jala, after his own mask was damaged during the journey to Mata Nui. The Kanohi was lost in Kazani when Jala traveled there with five other Matoran, and since then, reclaimed by Toa Tahu Nuva. He is voiced by Michael Dobson Jovan was a Taraga of Magnetism, and leader of the first team of Toa to recover the Mask of Life. Jovan served as Taraga of Voya Nui, until he was killed by the cataclysm that separated it from the mainland. Akmu see above, is not a real Taraga, but a treacherous Po Matoran who had aided Teradax in the past. He was appointed to be the Taraga of Metru Nui when Makuta Teradax took over the Matoran universe. His first assignment went to all the Po Matoran, banning all unauthorized artwork in the city, and carving statues of Makuta Teradax, Vakama, Nokama, Fenua, Nuju, Mato, and Onewa were released as the 2001 small sets. The Matoran Akmu was released in 2004 as a first wave small set. The form in which he appeared in the role of Taraga was never released as an actual set. Dume was available as part of the second wave 2004 sets Taraga Dume and Nivork, and Ultimate Dume. A Duracell exclusive figure depicting Lekan in his Taraga form was released in 2006. Jovan was never released as a Taraga, but in the Lego Club's official magazine, recipients were given the option to build his Toa form with pieces from Toa Inaka Nuparu, Hyuki, and Halley. <laughs> Order of Mata Nui The Order of Mata Nui is an organization within the universe. The Order of Mata Nui serves the Great Spirit Mata Nui. It was originally known as the Hand of Artaka, before it disbanded. Toa Helrix, the leader of the Order and the first Toa to come into being, later recruited a new organization to serve the Great Spirit where the Toa could not. It operates secretively, guarding artifacts and dispatching universal threats to the pit. Operatives include Helrix, Toa of Water. See above. Axon, a warrior with a giant axe. Brutarka, who can create dimensional gates. Hydraxon, a jailer. Hydraxon was originally killed during the Great Cataclysm, but a Matoran named Decker was later transformed into a perfect copy of Hydraxon. Botar, a jailer, and others of his species. Jabraz, who is invisible. 
Jomuk, a female warrior who can dissolve into a cloud of crystals. Tobduk, a vengeful warrior who handles the dirty jobs for the order. Trinema, a nine-foot-tall operative. Ancient, disguised as a dark hunter until his death. Topic: <laughs> Brotherhood of Makuta. The Brotherhood of Makuta was a faction led by the Makuta species, a sect of shapeshifters with control over the element of shadow and access to all Rakshi powers. See below. They were tasked by the great spirit Mata Nui to populate the Matoran universe with Rahi, but later took on larger universal roles. They were initially led by Makuta Miserix, who was overthrown in favor of Makuta Teradax and his plan to overthrow the great spirit Mata Nui. The Makuta species commanded the Brotherhood, formed of armies of the various species they created, such as the Visarak and the Rakshi. One of the last acts of the Brotherhood was to send a task force of their most powerful warriors to Kada Nui to transform the Avmatoran into Shadow Matoran. Following the death of Makuta Teradax in the 2010 storyline, all Makuta from the main universe are currently deceased, with the exception of Miserix. Teradax Makuta Teradax, better known as simply Makuta, or the Makuta, is the leader formerly lieutenant of the Brotherhood of Makuta, and the main antagonist of the Bionicle series. He put the Great Spirit into a coma, masqueraded as Taraga Dume to enslave the Matoran, awaited the arrival of the Toa Mata, and prevented them from awakening Mata Nui until the Great Spirit was close to death. His body was destroyed by Toa Takanuva, but his spirit survived as the green liquid Antidermis. In this form he influenced the events of Bionicle Legends in preparation of the final stages of his plan, and later assumed the form of a Maxillos guard robot. Shortly after Toa Matoro sacrificed his life to save Mata Nui, Teradax returned to Metru Nui to take over the core processor, which controlled the body of Mata Nui, and sent his compatriots to battle the Toa Nuva in Kada Nui. Teradax's compatriots were killed by energy storms as Mata Nui was awakened. Teradax then used his new powers to kill any remaining Makuta after the Destiny War. He was later killed by Mata Nui. Teradax, then known only as and thus credited as Makuta, was voiced by Lee Tocker in the first three Bionicle films and by Sean Schemmel in the video game. His name was not revealed until 2008. Most beings in the Matoran universe do not know his name, and refer to him as Makuta of Metru Nui, Makuta, or the Makuta. Even those aware of his name usually refer to him simply as Makuta. Topic: <inaudible> Rakshi. Rakshi are reptilian mechanical suits piloted by Krata serpents and created controlled by Makuta. Rakshi can fly and carry staves. Most Rakshi seen use their staffs to channel their powers. There are 42 different varieties of Rakshi and their abilities depend on which Krata pilots the armor. Only nine types of Rakshi have made specific appearances in the series. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Hunters The Dark Hunters are an organization of bounty hunters. Led by the Shadowed One, an ancient being of formidable power, the Dark Hunters are generally malevolent, but they will work for whoever pays the most regardless of what side they are on. Notable members include The Shadowed One, an ancient and powerful being. Sentrak, loyal servant of the Shadowed One. Ancient, co-founder of the Dark Hunters and spy for the Order of Mata Nui. Eliminator, who kills any hunters who fail their missions. Kreka, a brute whose death triggered the Dark Hunter Brotherhood of Makuta War. 
Nidhiki, a spider-like being and former Toa of Air whose death triggered the Dark Hunter Brotherhood of Makuta War. Voporak, a dark hunter sent to retrieve the Mask of Time. Darkness, a shadowy dark hunter who stalks the Shadowed One. The Paraka see below. Topic: <laughs> Paraka and Skakdi. The Paraka are a group of Skakdi, a lizard-like species from the island of Zakas, with elemental powers and vision enhancements, and often other abilities. The Paraka are thieves who defected from the Dark Hunters and banded together to find the Mask of Life. In an effort to find the mask, they went to the island of Voya Nui, enslaved the local Matoran, and scoured the island individually, each one attempting to find the mask first. Each Paraka plotted against the others, leading to distrust between the group. After battling both the Toa Nuva and Toa Inaka, the Paraka were mutated into snake-like forms before being fused together with other beings to create a monstrously powerful creature. The Paraka consist of Zaktan, the snake, a ruthless and intelligent Paraka whose body consisted of millions of insects. Hakan, the bully, who was egotistic, casually cruel, and prone to backstabbing his teammates. Redak, the tracer, whose brute strength and lust for destruction hid his cunning intelligence from the other five. Avak, the trigger, a rebellious Paraka who was a skilled engineer. Thok, the drifter, who was extremely solitary and often abandoned his teammates. Vezik, the beast, who was extremely clever, calm and collected. However, after his split from Vezin, Vezik lost his intellect and calm. While he was still able to present a cool exterior, he kept his rage and paranoia bottled up within him. Another notable member was Vezin, who was created when Hakan split Vezik into two beings. Vezin has all of Vezok's cunning, and is also insane. He abandoned the team soon after his creation. However, in an attempt to steal the Mask of Life, Vezin became one of its guardians. The name Paraka, which describes a particularly violent and sadistic thief or murder, was applied to another Skakdi named Nektan, who was released as a set in 2010. The other Paraka sets were released in 2007. Other members of the Skakdi race include Nektan and Ernik. Nektan was a warlord on Zakas who briefly formed an alliance with the Order of Mata Nui before joining forces with Makuta Teradax. The creature Ernik is a fictional monster representing the worst nightmares of the Skakdi. An illusion of Ernik appeared to confront the Paraka in the Zone of Fear, as they traveled deep underground to find the Mask of Life. Topic. Baraki The Baraki are powerful warlords who led a military alliance called the League of the Six Kingdoms, until the Order of Mata Nui banished them to a prison known as the Pit for attempting to overthrow Mata Nui. When the Pit flooded and became part of the ocean, the Baraki mutated into forms like those of sea creatures and formed new armies of local aquatic life. When the Mask of Life entered their domain, they sought to use it to return to their air breathing forms and reconquer the surface world. The Baraki consist of Kalma, the brains, who resembled a squid or octopus, Takadix, who betrayed the others, a cunning Baraki who resembled a mantis, Elek, a cautious Baraki who resembled an electric eel. Karapa, deceased, a brutish Baraki who resembled a crab. Mantax, a secretive and distrustful Baraki who resembled a manta ray. Pridak, the leader, who resembled a shark. They also had an unintelligent, four-armed lieutenant named Nocturne who was sent to the pit for breaking his home island to pieces. Karapa and Takadix were recruited by Brutarka to assist with the liberation of Makuta Miserix. Karapa was killed by Tren Krom when he attempted to ambush the ancient being, and was reduced into fragments. 
Tak addicts betrayed the group when they arrived on the island of Artadax where Miserix was imprisoned, attempting to steal the boat the group had traveled on, although he ironically became trapped on the island when the boat sank. Some time later, Tak addicts hypnotized Jala, Nuparu and Hali to stay on Artadax while the Vizorak were arriving and left on their boat. Fortunately, the Toa managed to escape but by then, Tak addicts was already gone. His current status is unknown. The four remaining Baraki were later freed from the pit to join the war against the Brotherhood of Makuta. They made a deal with the Shadowed One for a pack of prototype viruses, including the one administered to cast the Great Spirit into a coma. It was agreed that Pridak would meet with the Shadowed One at the island of Karzani, but the Shadowed One mysteriously vanished when his new island base was devastated, which forced the Baraki to march to Metru Nui regardless. At the same time, all the remaining Baraki were unmutated by a surge of life energy caused by Mata Nui. <laughs> Vortex. The Vortex are a species from the island of Chia, where females dominate males. They have little moral regard for life, having turned their island into an industrial nightmare through the production of weapons and military supplies. These are sold to anyone who pays them well. When the Vortex began to charge excessive prices, the Brotherhood of Makuta was forced to step in, and Makuta Mutran and Ikarax were dispatched to the island. The Vortex's refusal to comply eventually resulted in Icarax destroying a portion of the island, after which the Vortex became more willing to negotiate. Meanwhile, Mutran left behind a sentient rock on the island by accident, which eventually grew to be integral to Vortex society after it consumed enough victims to become a mountain. This mountain, known as the Mountain, causes acidic grass, and causes fire to rain from the sky. At some point in their lives, Vortex are offered the chance to complete the trial of climbing the mountain. Vortex will attempt to climb in pairs, and will be rewarded a higher station by returning together. However, those who return from the mountain after abandoning their partner are given an even higher status for displaying ruthlessness, and are allowed to leave the island if they wish. Only one Vortex has been named in the series, Rudaka, former viceroy of the Vizorak Horde, now a prisoner of the Order of Mata Nui after she double-crossed both the Brotherhood of Makuta and the Dark Hunters. <laughs> Rahaga, Toa Haga The Rahaga originally and later again Toa Haga were heroes mutated by Rudaka into beasts that resembled Rakshi. Their new title was mockingly bestowed upon them by Rudaka, as a fusion of Rakshi and Haga. Norik Fire Rahaga Bamonga Earth Rahaga Pook's Stone Rahaga Kualis Ice Rahaga Garki Water Rahaga Aruinier Rahaga Topic Rahi Rahi is the Matoran word for wildlife or not us. Many different species of Rahi exist, all in different shapes and sizes. Prominently featured Rahi include Fenrak, Kardas, Cracker, Kitungu, the Rahi Nui, Usul Crab, Tartorak, Ash Bear, Kikanalo, Muaka, Gukko, Kane Ra, Nui Rama, Nui Jaga, Tarakava, Spinax, and the Manus. The Vizorak are also considered Rahi and were featured as prominent antagonists in the series. Topic. Borok Borok are mechanical, insect-like creatures, and the remains of destined Avmatoran. The Borok are a race of drones driven by small, mask-like organisms called Krana. Existing only for a singular purpose, they will do anything and everything to fulfill the mission of cleaning the island of Mata Nui. 
Six elite Borok with heightened powers, known as the Borok Kal, were also created, but were destroyed in their attempt to unleash the swarms on the island once again. Barag The Barag are the leaders of the Borok, also known as the Borok Queens. The red one is named Gardok, and the blue one is named Kardok. These creatures are probably female, since they have been called the Borok Queens by the Matoran and the Taraga. Created by the great beings to guide the Borok and cleanse the island of Mata Nui whenever and if ever necessary, they were awakened by Pterodax prematurely, and unleashed their forces onto Mata Nui. Although they did not know of the Matoran's presence on the island, the Barag attempted to avoid them, but confrontations began between the Barag and the Matoran, ending in their attempt to assimilate the Matoran of Le Coro into the swarms. Eventually, the Barag fought the Toa Mata and the Exo Toa, and were imprisoned. Even the Borok Kal were unsuccessful as rescuers. Ironically, the Barag were freed by their nemeses, the Toa Nuva, as per the request of a list of necessary tasks to awaken the great spirit Mata Nui. Viki Viki were robots designed by Nuparu to be the law enforcers of order on Metru Nui. They cannot be reasoned with and they will not listen to excuses. Those chased by the Viki only have the options of surrender or run. <laughs> <laughs> Great beings These are scientist-like entities who created the Matoran, Toa, and almost everything else in the Matoran universe using nanotechnology. After a catastrophic war that split the planet into three, they created the great spirit Mata Nui to observe other civilizations and eventually repair their home planet. Since putting Mata Nui in charge, they have not paid much attention to the universe and were unaware of Mata Nui's coma, death, revival, awakening, and banishment. It has been revealed in the official web serials that the great beings had lived on Spherus Magna before it split into three segments. Their current location is mostly unknown. One great being, Angons, is aware of the reformation of Spherus Magna, but keeps this secret from all other characters. Another great being is Velika, who appears as one of the Matoran resistance on the island of Voya Nui. Topic. Great Spirit Mata Nui The Great Spirit Mata Nui is a consciousness created by the Great Beings to control a spacefaring robot to observe other worlds and cultures. He is the guardian of the Matoran universe, represents all virtue therein, and is himself represented by the principles of unity, duty, and destiny. At the beginning of the series, Makuta Teradax rendered him unconscious and caused him to crash into the moon Aqua Magna, where his body parts became the «islands» upon which events take place. For example, the island of Metru Nui is actually his brain, and Kada Nui is his heart. The great spirit Mata Nui is not to be confused with the island of Mata Nui, named after him. Other beings <inaudible> Umbra A guardian of the Kanohi Ignaka, the Mask of Life. He was created prior to the Order of Mata Nui by the great beings to guard the Ignaka. He battled the Toa Inaka on their journey, and upon the Toa defeating him, Umbra knew they were powerful enough to claim the mask, and were destined to. Umbra currently awaits the Ignika's return. Umbra is a being entirely composed of light, in nature and essence. As a result, he possesses a laser lance and light powers, and can also transform himself into a bolt of light. He also is armed with wheels on his feet to skate and attack foes, and a rotuka spinner that projects solid light. 
However, he does not possess as much light power as a Toa of Light. Kazani Kazani was the tyrannical ruler of a hellish domain where Matoran who worked poorly were sent. According to ancient legend, Matoran once labored in darkness, but those who excelled at their tasks were sent to Artaka where they would work in the light. Matoran who were damaged or poor workers were sent to the realm of Kazani, whose Kanohi mask had the power to make the victim see an alternate future, usually a frightening one. There they would be fixed, but Kazani did not do his job well, and, racked with guilt, equipped the repaired Matoran with weapons and shipped them off to remote areas of the southern continent, instead of their homelands. After a while, Kazani convinced himself that the Matoran were sent to his realm to be punished, and trapped the remaining Matoran and any new ones that came in his realm. When the Taraga of many years ago realized that the Matoran were not coming back, they stopped sending them. Thousands of years later, Jala, Hali, Hyuki, Kongu, Nuparu, and Matoro were captured, not sentenced. They escaped, but in that encounter, Kazani learned of the great spirit Mata Nui and Makuta, beings who Kazani would have neither known nor cared about. Deciding to seize power, Kazani rose from his realm into Mari Nui, and there did battle with Toa Lasovic, and later Makuta Teradax, who vanquished the tyrant by tearing his mind to shreds. Kazani was then imprisoned in a water tank on the island of Daxia. He was released unknowingly by Mata Nui during the reforming of Spherus Magna, though once on the New World, he met his death at a natural chasm known as Iron Canyon, believed to have been assassinated by Velika whilst simultaneously framing Lasovic. Since Kazani has left his realm, his kingdom has been destroyed and the Matoran freed. Kazani also refers to an intelligent plant creature, created by Makuta and named after the legendary ruler. However, the plant was deemed to be too ambitious and intelligent, and was later abandoned in favor of the Morbuzak. Artaka Created in the same period as Kazani, Artaka was the ruler of a mythical island, which he named after himself. This island was where Matoran crafters were dispatched to work in safety. He is seen as the brother of Kazani, however, the two are rivals, and have in the past done battle over the right to wear the Kanohi Mask of Creation, in which Artaka was victorious. The Toa Nuva met Artaka before they were transported to Kada Nui, but did not actually see him. After he learned of their identity and purpose, Artaka gave the Toa Nuva their present adaptive armor. The first time Artaka made a personal appearance in the story was to a small group of beings, including Tren Krom using Lewa's body, Axon, Toa Helrix, Makuta Miserix, and the Matoran Kapura underneath Metru Nui's Colosseum. The events of this encounter caused Teradax to eject the group into space, where they eventually were rescued by the mad Skakdi Vezin, using his newfound powers over dimensional gates to save them, he brought them on the moon known as Bota Magna. With the time they were in space, a great amount of help came from Toa Lewa, who was put back in his body and provided breathable air for all of the party save Miserix, whose species had evolved beyond need of it. Topic. Tren Krom Tren Krom is a powerful entity created by the great beings to take care of the Matoran universe. He is a fully organic, three-eyed being, with tentacles sprouting from his face. When he was no longer needed and the time came for him to relinquish his post, he refused, and was ousted by force, causing the great beings to fuse him into the rock of an uninhabited island as punishment for his audacity. He, like the similar character Ernik, is widely regarded to be nothing more than a myth by most of the universe, a story made up to frighten Matoran into behaving but few dare to approach his island nonetheless. 
According to Bionicle author Greg Farshti, Tren Krom was inspired by the character Cthulhu from H. P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. Krom is said to be so hideous that to look upon him causes madness. A common Lovecraft plot device, Mutran, Lewa, and Brutarka's team are presumably the only characters in the story other than the great beings to have met Tren Krom in person. Mutran commented that Krom has a voice so terrifying that it makes Pterodax's voice sound lilting and sweet. Topic: <laughs> Bara Magna. Bara Magna is a desert planet which once was part of a larger planet called Spheris Magna. This planet shattered into three pieces during a great war in the past, and the other parts of the planet Aqua Magna and Bota Magna act as moons. The planet has other types of elemental regions but are very limited. The beings native there do not have elemental or mask powers and are organic with some mechanical implants. <laughs> Agori. Agori are the villages of Bara Magna similar to Matoran. Known Agori include Tarduk, a jungle tribe Agori. An explorer, he searches the Bara Magna desert for secrets and clues. Ranu, the leader of the fire tribe. Voiced by Armin Shimmerman in Bionicle, the legend reborn. The Zesk, Agori of the sand tribe who became beasts after the disaster. Berix, a water tribe Agori who makes a living off of collecting scraps. Voiced by James Arnold Taylor in Bionicle, The Legend Reborn. Metis, an ice tribe Agori best known for employing and training Glatorian for work in the arena. He was revealed to be the true villain of the 2009 story, having gotten the Skrall and Bone Hunters to unite under his leadership, believing the Agori never did anything for him was eventually changed into a serpent for his treachery by Marta Nui. Voiced by David Leisure in the 2009 film, Bionicle, The Legend Reborn. Atakus, a rock tribe Agori who is an assistant to the Skrull. Kyrie, a fire tribe Agori. Kerbold, an ice tribe Agori who worked with Tarduk. Crotesius, an arena vehicle pilot, a fire tribe Agori who once aided Tarduk. Skodonius, an arena vehicle pilot. Kerbraz, arena vehicle pilot and Skodonius's partner. Samad, one of the few left of the Iron Tribe since a mysterious plague struck them long ago. Topic. Glatorian. The 2009 storyline features beings called Glatorian in place of Toa. Glatorian are warriors that the Agori tribes hire, so that when a dispute arrives over territory or resources, war will not result. Instead, Glatorian would be sent to fight in the arena. The winning Glatorian's village would win the dispute. They were formerly soldiers in what is known as the Core War. In the storyline, and are physically similar to Toa. Mata Nui. Mata Nui was the great spirit of the Matoran universe and consciousness of a giant spacefaring robot but was banished and imprisoned in the Kanohi Ignaka by Makuta Teradax. When he arrived on Bara Magna, he created a body for himself and introduced himself as Toa Mata Nui. Voiced by Michael Dawn in the 2009 film, Bionicle, The Legend Reborn. Gresh, a young Glatorian who serves the jungle tribe. He was equipped with a razor-edge jungle shield and a thornax launcher. He has an encyclopedic knowledge of arena moves, but sometimes relies on tried-and-true moves too much. After meeting Mata Nui, he helped the former Great Spirit to defeat the Skrall and Bone Hunters. He is voiced by Mark Familietti in Bionicle, The Legend Reborn. Strack, a Glatorian who served the Ice Tribe. He is intelligent, sneaky, and will do whatever he can get away with to be named champion of all Glatorian. 
What he does not realize, however, is that some obey the rules of the arenas and have no patience for the sort of tricks he tries to do. In an arena match against Akka, Strack, despite having conceded, attacked Akka after doing so. This led to his exile from the Ice Tribe as no village can afford to send a Glatorian without honor to the arena. He is armed with an ice axe and a thornax launcher. Strack is voiced by Jeff Glenn Bennett. Tarix, a Glatorian who serves the Water Tribe. He is renowned for his incredible skill, and the fact that he has won over 1,000 battles and, together with Certivus, was one of the inventors of the Glatorian system. He carries two water blades and a thornax launcher. Tarix, like Strack, is voiced by Jeff Glenn Bennett. Malum, a Glatorian who was exiled from the Fire Tribe for trying to kill his opponent in an arena match after they had already conceded. Malum possesses a pair of flame claws and a shoulder-mounted thornax launcher. After exile, he had become the leader of a Vorox clan. While he doesn't appear in The Legend Reborn, the Scarabax Beetles take the form of a giant version of him at one point. The Vorox are not the same species as most Glatorian anymore. Vorox were once Glatorian, but after a great disaster, they regressed into little more than beasts. They are technically the Sand Tribe. A commonly wielded weapon is a spear and a thornax launcher. They have a deadly stinger tail as well. Akka, a Glatorian who serves the Fire Tribe, and the victor of many championships in Arena Magna. He fears he may be past his prime, and is not as quick as he used to be. He wields a flame sword and a thornax launcher. After Mata Nui arrived on Bara Magna, he has joined him to fight the Skrull. He is voiced by Jim Cummings. Kina, a Glatorian who serves the Water Tribe. She is also the top female Glatorian in the arena, and very aggressive and pushy. She finds Bara Magna a wasteland and wishes of nothing more but to escape to another planet. She carries a jewel-headed vapor trident and a thornax launcher. Kina had aided Mata Nui in defeating the Skrull. She is voiced by Marla Sokolov in Bionicle, The Legend Reborn. Vastus, a Glatorian who serves the Jungle Tribe. Vastus is extremely guilt-ridden after the Core War on Spherus Magna. He wields a Venom Spear with a Thornax Launcher attached to it. The Venom is prohibited in arena matches, however. Vastus is voiced by James Arnold Taylor, who also voiced Berex. Gelu, a retired Glatorian who served the Ice Tribe. He once retired to work as a caravan guard. He has since rejoined the Ice Tribe. He carries an ice slicer and thornax launcher. Certivus, a legendary Glatorian who once served the Ice Tribe and was the most powerful, now deceased. Surel, a warrior of the Ice Tribe who served in the Spherus Magna War. Due to an event in the past, he has damaged his leg and uses a walking stick to move around. Perditus, a Glatorian who fights for Vulcanus, but chose to be a vehicle fighter instead of a regular fighting Glatorian. He drives the Thornatus V9 in the arena. Telluris, a Glatorian member of the Iron Tribe that was struck by a mysterious plague long ago. As one of the last survivors of the plague he now wanders the wastelands shunned by the other Agorian Glatorian seeing him as a plague bearer. He has built a vehicle called the Scopio XV-1, based on the Scopio creature, helping him survive the harsh desert of Bara Magna. Topic: The Skrull. The Skrull are not technically the same species as most Glatorian, but they are one of the species allowed to serve as Glatorian. They are of the Rock Tribe. No Glatorian has ever defeated a Skrull in the arena, and the Skrull were on the verge of conquering Bara Magna when Mata Nui arrived. They are stronger, faster, and more agile than the Glatorian, but they are also so arrogant that they do not do as well against tricky opponents. Many warriors wield saw blade shields, and thornax launchers attached to Skrull tribal design blades, while elite Skrull use thorn clubs and thornax launchers. 
These descriptions ally to male members of the species, female members known as the sisters of the Skrull previously possessed psionic powers granted them by the monstrous Anona, which resulted in a rift between them and the Skrull. Stronius is an elite Skrull warrior, who is gifted with greater strength and intelligence than other Skrull. Armed with a spiked club and thornax launcher. It was Stronius who discovered the Batera were machines after he defeated one. Branar, a Skrull who was given a name after surviving a Batera attack. He is a basic warrior class Skrull. Tuma, the only remaining member of the leader class of Skrull and the only one able to grant a Skrull a name. He inherited leadership of the Skrull after the other leaders were slaughtered by the Batera. Unable to find a way to eliminate the threat, he ordered the Skrull legions south to the abandoned city of Roxtus. Under the advice of Metis, he led the combined Bone Hunter and Skrull army during the Skrull War. After Mata Nui defeated him in a duel, he was abandoned by his tribe and subsequently imprisoned by the Glatorian, but escaped during the Battle of Bara Magna. He now roams the wastelands. He is voiced by Fred Tatashiori in Bionicle, The Legend Reborn. Topic: <laughs> Bone Hunters. The Bone Hunters are a race of violent and destructive nomadic warriors. They are not Agori but have some relations with the Rock tribe. They ride on rock steeds native to Bara Magna. The only named bone hunter so far is Pharaoh. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Generation 2. In addition to the Toa Mata, now referred to as Toa or Masters, several new characters appear in the rebooted story. Ekimu Ekimu the Mask Maker was one of the great mask makers of Okoto along with his brother, Makuta. He wore the Mask of Creation, which aided him in creating masks for the island's inhabitants. Unfortunately, this meant that Ekimu's masks began to become favored over Makuta's, causing the latter to become jealous. After Makuta violated a sacred law by creating a mask made of multiple elements the mask of ultimate power, the two fought and subsequently blasted each other into a deep sleep. When Ekamu's mask less, Komato's body was discovered by the protectors, they laid him to rest in a sarcophagus in the ancient city of the mask makers. After the Toa arrived on Okoto, it became part of their mission to revive Ekimu and reunite him with his Mask of Creation, leading Ekimu to join them in their battle with the Skull Army of Makuta's minions. Later, he would join them in the final struggle to try and thwart Makuta's return, using the power of light to take on a more powerful form and forming an alliance with Agil, the creature of light. Topic. Makuta Makuta the Mask Hoarder is Ekamu's brother, who he used to create masks for the residents of Okoto with. Once he realized that Ekamu's masks were favored over his, he became jealous and forged the Mask of Ultimate Power, which transformed and corrupted him. When Ekimu discovered Makuta's treachery, they fought, but Ekimu was made comatose by the intensity of their own powers, Makuta losing his original mask of control in the process. It was subsequently revealed that the mask of ultimate power exploded due to being unable to contain the power of all six elements of Okoto and tore open a portal to the Shadow Realm that drew Makuta and Okoto's capital city into that dark dimension. Makuta's spirit would reach out from his prison to plague Okoto through the evil skull creatures, only for them to be defeated when the Toa arrived on Okoto. He would then employ Amarik the hunter to recover the Mask of Control, using its power to turn Amarik into his obedient minion and unleashing the evil Shadow Horde. While these elemental beasts distracted the Toa, Makuta directed Amarik to find the pieces of the Mask of Ultimate Power, which he would then employ in an effort to free Makuta. 
Makuta nearly achieved freedom after sacrificing his minion, only to be banished back to the Shadow Realm by the combined powers of the Toa. Topic. Protectors The protectors are the leaders of each region of Okoto, the protector of fire is the leader of the region of fire, the protector of water leader of the region of water, etc. Unlike ordinary villagers, the protectors are armed to the teeth, because they have had to fulfill the roles of Toa in the absence of real Toa for thousands of years. Each possesses a unique weapon, tool in addition to a projectile launcher. The role of protector is passed through the generations from father to son or daughter in the case of the current protector of Earth, along with their special twin-colored masks. When the Lord of Skull Spiders appeared on the island with an army of skull spiders, and the stars in the sky aligned, the protectors decided to summon the Toa to the island as foretold in the Prophecy of Heroes. When the Toa arrived, the protectors assisted them in retrieving the golden masks of power. Though unnamed on their sets, the protectors were later assigned names in associated media. Namoto, protector of fire, and wielder of twin flame swords. Isotor, protector of ice, who wields a buzz saw weapon. Vizuna, protector of jungle, possesses an elemental flame bow. Kavoda, protector of water, has a two-handled projectile launcher and twin turbines that aid him in swimming. Nilku, protector of stone, his launcher fires sandstone elemental blasts and is mounted on the end of a two-pronged staff. Korgut, protector of earth, the only female member of the current generation of protectors, who wields a star-shaped drill and carries throwing knives. The novels and graphic novels also gave names to the six protectors who served at the time of Ekimu and Makuta's battle, who are cosmetically identical to their descendants: Fire Mamuk, Ice Yuganu, Jungle Agarak, Water Owaki, Stone Karato, and Earth Otoku. Topic. Toa The six elemental masters, uniters, a group of foretold heroes who command the powers of the six elements and are destined to save Okoto from the forces of evil. Topic. Skull spiders The Skull Spiders are arachnid creatures that had terrorized Okoto ever since the conflict between Ekimu and Makuta. They have invaded the villages of the island with the intention of seeking the Mask of Creation, and are capable of taking control of any maskless Toa, Protector or Islander. <laughs> Lord of Skull Spiders The Lord of Skull Spiders is a large arachnid creature that possesses the golden mask of Skull Spiders. It uses the mask to control the Skull Spiders. After sensing its armies being beaten again and again by the Toa, Protector Alliance, it confronted them at the entrance to the abandoned city, but was no match for their combined power. Topic. Skull Army. Little is known about the undead Skull Army, apart from the fact that its warriors seem to want to steal the energy of the Toa by seizing their golden masks of power and destroying the Mask of Creation. These skeleton warriors, animated by the power of Makuta's spirit, originate from the abandoned city of the Mask Makers and are led by the Skull Grinder. Skull Grinder, also known as Kulta, the leader of the skeleton warriors. With his Mask Stealer Staff, he can drain energy from Masks of Power and use it to feed his undead army. When the Toa arrived before he could destroy the Mask of Creation, he donned it and used its power against him only to be defeated by Ekimu. He was imprisoned in the city of the Mask Makers but later escaped with Makuta's help only to be defeated again. Skull Warrior The Skull Warriors are skeleton warriors in the Skull Grinders service. They are armed with elemental freeze bows or ice spears. 
Skull Slicer The Skull Slicer was once an arena champion on Okoto before being reanimated by a Skull Spider. The various blades he wielded have been fused to his body, making him a fearsome threat. However, the Toa defeated him after he stole Lewa's mask and he fell into the city's depths. Skull Basher The Skull Basher was a minotaur-like warrior created by the Skull Grinder to guard the Temple of Creation. He wields two giant hooked axes and stole Inua's mask, but was defeated and imprisoned. Skull Scorpio, feral scorpion-like skeleton warriors under the Skull Grinder's command, the Skull Scorpios search for masks in the abandoned city. They stole Pohatu's mask but were defeated by the Toa and later driven from the city. Skull Raiders, villains exclusive to the novel Escape from the Underworld, they are ancient pirates and minions of the Skull Grinders described as black armored warriors with black skull masks. Their members include a commander named Axito, who was defeated in a battle with Gali. He and the other Skull Raiders were subsequently trapped in the ruins of their underground city. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Elemental creatures. Uxa, creature of jungle, resembles a dragonfly. Ketar, creature of stone, resembles a scorpion. Akida, creature of water, resembles a shark or a dolphin. Ikir, creature of fire, resembles an eagle or a phoenix. Terak, creature of earth, resembles an ape-like lizard, according to the hieroglyphics found by the six protectors in Revenge of the Skull Spiders. Melum, creature of ice, resembles an ape-like rhinoceros, according to the hieroglyphics discovered by the protectors in Revenge of the Skull Spiders. Agil, creature of light, resembles a hawk. Amaric <laughs> 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 Umaric the hunter is an ancient hunter who was born during or immediately after Okoto's creation, in order to hunt the six elemental creatures using his shadow trap minions. For reasons unknown, he has apparently been unsuccessful until the present day, when he entered into Makuta's service. A powerful warrior with a bow and blade in his arsenal, he wears a hunter mask which enables him to control shadow, manipulating it to travel from place to place and force the elemental creatures to bond with him. He can also summon animalistic clone-like minions known as the Shadow Spawn, though these are apparently no match for the likes of the Toa. After recovering and donning Makuta's Mask of Control, he is mutated into an obedient, bestial servant of Makuta's known as Umaric the Destroyer. The Destroyer soon unleashed the Shadow Horde upon Okoto to distract the Toa while he collected the pieces of Makuta's Mask of Ultimate Power and traveled to the Black Crater in order to free his master. He would then be engaged in battle by the Toa and Ekimu, gaining the upper hand due to his great power and control of the terrain. However, Makuta then sacrificed him to complete the portal that would enable him to escape the Shadow Realm. <laughs> <laughs> Elemental beasts A horde of monsters created by Umaric from his shadow traps after his transformation into the Destroyer. Also known as the Shadow Horde. Lava Beast, monsters with lava powers. Storm Beast, monsters with water and lightning powers. Quake Beast, monsters with rock-based powers. Topic. See also. Locations in the Bionicle Saga Topic Sources Greg Farshdi, the series writer Bionicle Encyclopedia, Scholastic Inc. 2007 Updated Edition Bionicle, Mask of Light, Lego, Miramax 2003 Bionicle 2, Legends of Metru Nui, Lego, Miramax 2004 
Bionicle 3, Web of Shadows, Lego, Miramax 2005 Bionicle, The Legend Reborn, Lego, Universal 2009 Bionicle Chronicles Bionicle Adventures Bionicle Legends BionicleStory.com-Official Bionicle subsite containing reference information and official web serials. Site is no longer up.